Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another section of our course in Azure DevOps. So I have changed the name of the course recently, the reason being just to align how the course name can be along with the discussion that we are doing. So we're not doing really the continuous integration, delivery and deployment with Azure DevOps Service 2019 anymore. And because Azure service is not just limited to a version, it's a service. So every year it's going to be automatically updated. So it cannot be tagged in any year name as a version name. So basically it's a continuous integration and continuous delivery with Azure DevOps course. So in this section, we are going to talk about building and deploying app using Jenkins as continuous integration and Azure DevOps as continuous delivery. So this is a very, very common use case and I have worked with many companies where these kind of situations are very, very common. And there are other situations where Azure DevOps act as an continuous integration, whereas the continuous delivery will be something like Team City or Octopus, something like that. So it completely depends on how your organization really prefers to deploy the application based on your company's need. But in this video, the most common way is this one. Continuous integration, mostly the legacy Jenkins systems, which would have not even been replaced into Azure DevOps services. So the Azure build pipeline may be coming into picture pretty quickly or very soon within your organization, but Jenkins will be the forefront for building the application, whereas the deployment may be happening with Azure DevOps release pipeline. So Azure DevOps pipeline act as a continuous delivery in this place. This is what is the one that we'll be discussing in this particular section of this course. So the architecture of the one that we'll be discussing in this particular lab is going to be this one. So use Jenkins as the continuous integration and Azure DevOps as continuous delivery to deploy and test the application. So you can see, I'm going to call this as lab two. The reason being this is another lab that we are discussing following our earlier section which is lab one where we discussed how we can actually build an application how to run the test and how to take the screenshot and console log and stuff within the release pipeline to see how the reporting is going to look like for our test within azure devops that was lab one and this is going to be lab two and there are more labs following in this particular course it's going to be very very detailed following this section and in upcoming section, the reason being that's what the market needs in terms of the Azure DevOps itself. So in this lab too, we are going to discuss about this. You can see we will have an Azure repo, which is going to store our source code. And this source code repo is going to be your Azure repo. It can be your GitHub repo or your Git organization repo. It can be anything of that. But in this case, for this lab, I'm going to use our Azure repo as the source code repository. And then this Azure repo is going to be consumed within our Jenkins, which is installed within any one of the environment. So again, we'll be talking about that in a couple of minutes in this particular video. So Jenkins is what is going to be consuming the repository where your source code is actually sitting. And then this particular Jenkins is going to build your source code and then it's going to create an artifact. And then once the artifact is created, then it is going to push this particular artifact into the Azure build pipeline or within the Azure itself. So once the build pipeline is executed within this stage in this particular arrow between the Azure release pipeline and within the Jenkins, it is then going to be triggered automatically within the Azure release pipeline where your application is going to be deployed within any one of the specified machine that you have, which can be done using what is called as the deployment groups. So the deployment group is going to be responsible for doing all those actions. And once the application has been deployed, it is then going to execute your test, whichever is specified within this particular build. And then it is going to generate a report like how we saw in our earlier video. So it is kind of a very, very common scenario where your Jenkins will act as a continuous integration system, whereas the continuous delivery will be something like Azure release pipeline, or it can be anything else. Again, it's all up to you how your organization is going to take. So this is the whole architecture. This is the lab that we'll be discussing in this whole section of this course. And again, this is going to be a very, very detailed section. So there are going to be many parts in this particular section to understand how things will work. 
So the agenda of this section is going to look something like this. We are going to first install Jenkins and then configure Jenkins because it's going to be a little complex task than the normal Jenkins that you can really configure. And then we're going to create a freestyle Jenkins project within our Jenkins because that's what is going to be accessed within the Azure DevOps service. And then we need to configure the Azure service to connect with the Jenkins which is running in any one of your environment. And again, the any one of the environment is something we'll be discussing next. But again, this is something which Azure DevOps service needs to connect with the Jenkins itself. And then you need to run the build with the build pipeline for Jenkins. Again, this is going to be a very, very special thing that we'll be doing within Azure DevOps service because without this, you cannot really track what's happening within the Jenkins of a remote machine or any environment where the Jenkins is actually being deployed. So this particular stage is very, very important while you configure it. And finally, we'll be setting an automatic trigger to run the release pipeline, which is going to be something like what we have discussed earlier in our course. So all these are going to happen simultaneously once you check in your code. It's very, very awesome. And all these are going to happen effortlessly without you being intervening in any one of the stages. It's all going to be happening like a free flow for you. So the first one is going to be the Jenkins installation options. So the Jenkins installation option is very, very important. As I told you before, Jenkins can be installed either locally or within the Docker of local machine or Docker on cloud. It can be Google Cloud or Azure DevOps or Azure or AWS, or it can be on a cloud VM as well. So Azure Cloud App is one such example that you can install the Jenkins and then you can start working from it. And again, installation of Jenkins to the local machine is very, very easy. You can easily do using the var file of the Jenkins, or you can also spin up a Docker within your local machine to do that. But the catch in here is we are going to be building a .NET based application. So be careful that the image that you have or need to have for building the .NET core application using Jenkins within the Linux operating system is something highly customizable stuff. So you need to be customizing that before doing that. Again, for that reason, to make this section even more easier, I'm going to be using the Jenkins, which is going to be running within my local machine and see how it's going to basically work. And that brings another questions here. Jenkins, which is going to be running within my local machine, if it is not running in a Docker on cloud or a cloud VM, accessing the Jenkins within the local machine installation from outside world is very, very tricky because you need to somehow do a lot of other options to configure so that your Jenkins can be accessible outside of the network. So the Jenkins configuration in local machine will go through a series of operation, something like this. So you can see that you need to do the following configuration to make your Jenkins installation to be exposed to the outside world. Something like you need to go to the router setting and do the port forwarding with port of your choice. That's very, very important. Without port forwarding, you cannot really gain access to your local Jenkins from the outside world. And then you need to access the Jenkins from your public IP and the port specified in the routers. That's very, very important. So you need to be specifying which IP that you need to be specifying to the outside world within your router setting. And once this is done, you can see within your local installation of Jenkins, it throws you an error saying that the CSRF setting has been somehow compromised and the reverse proxy setting has been reset. So you need to change both of them so that you can make the Jenkins to be accessible from the outside world. So you should be doing that as well. So you need to remove the CSRF setting from the Jenkins security. That's the next option. So CSRF is nothing but the cross site request forgery. So you need to somehow make sure that the CSRF is disabled. Again, this is completely not recommended to do in reality because CSRF is something like an attack that forces an end user to execute unwanted action on the web application in which they are currently authenticated. So if you, someone gain access to your Jenkins, they can completely ruin your whole code. So please don't do that. And because I'm going to run Jenkins within my local machine, I somehow have to do this, which is completely not advisable while you do in a production grade environment. So don't do that. But because I don't really have any Azure subscription, 
I have no choice but I have to show this demo to you in this unrecommended manner. So you need to remove the CSRF setting from Jenkins, long story short, and then you need to change the default IP address of the Jenkins to the public IP and the port. And again, I'm saying the default IP address to the Jenkins of the public IP. So every machine that you're running will have its own public IP based on the internet service provider and within your machine, you will gain an actual IP address. So you need to somehow specify that as well. And finally, make sure your Windows firewall is turned off. So if you don't turn this off, Microsoft will not gonna let you any of the port being accessible from the outside world. I mean, you can just specify the port that you'll be exposing to the outside world. It's very, very easy to do that. But again, if you turn off the firewall completely, then it's gonna be much easier. So I'm just gonna be doing that. And finally, you can access the URL from your public IP to see how it works. So all these options that you can see is just for the Jenkins configuration. So once we do all this configuration for the Jenkins in our local machine, then we can access the Jenkins from the outside world. And this makes the way how we can access this particular Jenkins to the outside world. And the rest of this story that we discussed in the agenda is going to be much, much straightforward. And we'll be doing that in this whole section. So let's quickly get started and understand how things work. Welcome back. Well, in our earlier videos, we did all these options. We took the code from the Azure repos and then we executed the source code within the local Jenkins machine. We did all the configurations and all those stuff, which is pretty cool. And we also made a service connection within our Azure DevOps service to talk with the local Jenkins server, which is running within my local machine in Windows. And the next option is, you can see that the diagram has been changed a little bit this time. We now need to talk with the Azure build pipeline because this Azure build pipeline is the one which is gonna be automatically talking with the Jenkins build server within my local machine, perform a build operation, and then it's gonna take the artifacts, upload the artifacts to the Azure repositories, and then it's gonna perform a release and all those stuff. So you need to somehow configure the Azure build pipeline so that you can then talk with the Azure release pipeline and then perform the rest of the operation that is mentioned in here in the architecture. So we next need to create what is called as an Azure build pipeline to actually automatically triggering the builds within my local Jenkins server, which we'll be doing in this particular video. All right, so now I'm in my Azure DevOps service and we have already created the Azure service connection in our earlier video. And now I'm gonna go to the pipeline and I'm gonna go and create a new pipeline this time. Well, the new pipeline this time, I'm gonna choose the classical editor rather the YAML based editor. The reason being it is very, very straightforward and easier to see the graphical user interface. So I'm gonna choose the source code from our master branch, which is all good, like how we did in our earlier video. And this time I'm gonna select a template. The template is nothing but the Jenkins template. You can see it's fairly straightforward and that's the reason I have selected this particular classical template basically. And you can see we have presented with a whole new build experience. So this is where is gonna be your pipeline basically gonna be executing. So you can see that it is asking us where you're gonna perform the operation. So it's gonna ask you which agent pool that you'll be using uh, for your execution. So I'm just gonna leave these two things as it is without any change. But the job name is something which we will be very, very clearly specifying. If you remember in our earlier video while we created, we created the project as Jenkins build for Azure. So make sure that you give the same name for your job within the parameter. That's super important. If you change this name, you'll probably ruin every single operation that we'll be doing in our upcoming steps in here. And then the service connection. The service connection is something that we just created in our earlier video, which is nothing but the Jenkins local. So make sure you select this so you can see that everything is good right now. And then I'm gonna perform a get source, which is all good. And make sure you also check this don't sync sources because you can see this is gonna be uh, 
skipping if it is going to be working within your local directory so this option is very very helpful so make sure you check this particular option and now go to the agent over here and this is the agent which is going to do a trackable operation for you and because you need to track what's happening within your Jenkins and you need to see what's really happening within your Jenkins like execution you need to make sure that you can also track that and report within the build pipeline of the Azure DevOps service. So again, don't get confused in here. You may think that we already have the Jenkins build, Jenkins build is already created. Why do we again need to create a build pipeline within Azure DevOps? So guys, we are not doing anything in here like getting the source code from the Azure repository and building using the Azure pipeline. Rather, we are going to use the build engine of Jenkins to build our source code and we're going to take the source code from the Jenkins and upload within our build pipeline as an artifact so that we can use it within our release pipeline to perform the operation. And that's what we are doing in here, right? So I'm going to choose an agent. So I'm just going to choose just the Azure uh, pipeline, which is all good. So I'm just going to choose the Windows 2019 and I'm just gonna leave all these guys as it is. So you can see that I have nothing to configure in here. It's automatically taking the Jenkins service endpoint as uh, Jenkins local, and it's gonna capture the console output and wait for the completion, capture the pipeline output and wait for the pipeline completion. It's all checked automatically for us, so all good. And the download artifact produced by the Jenkins for Azure. So I'm just gonna leave this as it is. I'm just gonna take all the artifacts just coming in and then it's going to publish the artifact for us. All good for now. I'm not going to change even a single piece of lines which is configured automatically for us. So I'm just going to save and queue new build. So this is the first time we are going to do that. So I'm going to say Jenkins build from Azure DevOps. And I'm going to hit save and run. So once I do that, you can actually see everything is happening within my console over here and the output over here. So you can see once I triggered, uh, this is the Jenkins which I spinned up in our local machine. You should see something happening over here. So you can see it starting the build for us. There we go, it got succeeded as well, pretty faster. And then it's gonna perform an upload of the artifacts and stuff. So let's wait for the whole upload operation to happen because this is one thing which takes so much of time. There we go. You can see that the queue build has been completed and now it is downloading the artifacts within the Azure build pipeline, which is pretty cool. And it's gonna perform some post job checkout for the Udemy course, all good. So you can see that we now have an artifact in here. So if I go to the artifacts, you can see I have a drop folder where I have the complete build code over here, which is pretty cool. So because we did the void card to, to publish all the files from the Jenkins to the Azure DevOps service over here, as you can see, the exact same thing came for us in here as well. So the execution actually happened within the Jenkins. It got uploaded from Jenkins and it came all the way to us in here. So this is something proves the point that our execution is actually happening without any problem. So you can see it is actually talking to our local Jenkins 10.98.250.224. Uh, this one, this right? And then it performed the operation within my machine over here and then it got the build, it uploaded the artifacts, all those operations happened to us without any problem. That's it guys, this is how you can actually see that our execution actually happens without any problem. In our next video, we'll see how we can perform a release pipeline for the build that we have made and how we can run the test which is already sitting within the artifacts of my build pipeline.